Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Radio waves are all around us, and they are containing different types of information. Some radio frequencies contain information about the weather. Some of them contain just the normal radio frequencies that we listen to on our car radio. But it's always interesting to try and build your own radio to tap into these radio waves, so that way you can hear what they're saying yourself. So today we're going to be building an AM crystal radio using a different way than uh, commonly used. So we're going to be using a high watt resistor as the coil. So in a typical crystal radio, you have a form and you have a special coil wound around it, and that coil is how you tune the radio to a certain frequency. So let's get started, and I'll explain a little bit about how radio waves work and how this is going to work. Now let me explain a little bit about how radio waves work. So let's say this is the wave that we want to transmit over the radio. This is an audio frequency wave, and let's say it's about 2 kilohertz. This is in the human range of audio hearing, and it looks something like this. Now we can't feed this wave directly into an antenna because nothing would happen. It wouldn't transmit anywhere. You'd have to have a higher frequency wave in order to have it transmitted electromagnetically. And you would do that by putting this audio wave on something called a carrier wave. Now, the carrier wave is something like this, and the carrier wave will be something around 640 kilohertz. This is one radio station that I like to listen to. So you've got the 2 kilohertz audio modulator wave and the 640 kilohertz uh, carrier wave. And when you combine those two, you get something that looks like this. Now let's go to how the radio is actually able to decode these waves. So inside a radio, the most important part you have is the LC circuit. And the LC circuit is formed with an inductor and a capacitor. Now, either one or both of these devices can be variable. With a variable capacitor, you see something like this. And with variable inductor, you have the inductor like something like this. Now what's going to happen is they're going to use this special tank circuit to isolate a certain frequency. And so you've got tons of different frequencies of electromagnetic radiation flowing all around you coming from an antenna. And so this antenna is full of all kinds of different electromagnetic waves. You want to isolate out a specific one. So you're going to use this LC circuit. And basically it's tuned to oscillate at a certain frequency based on the capacitance of the capacitor and the inductance of the inductor. And this certain frequency that it's going to oscillate at is going to kind of amplify it. So what's going to happen is you want to have this antenna. The antenna is going to go through the uh, LC circuit and, and then the bottom of the LC circuit is going to be grounded. And so the output of this LC circuit is going to be just that specific wave that you want to look at. The wave we looked at on the other side, how it looks something like this. And so it's basically going to filter out all the other frequencies that you don't want to hear to the frequency you do want to hear. This is how you adjust your radio station, because by changing the capacitor or the inductor, you can fine tune which radio station you want to listen to. But you can't plug this straight into some speakers, because that wouldn't work. You wouldn't hear a single thing. So what you have to do is you have to put a diode on the end. And what this diode does is it filters out only the top half of the audio. And so instead of getting a wave that looks something like this, which wouldn't work for any kind of purpose, you get a wave that looks something like this, which you can actually hear if you add a capacitor after it. And that would make a perfect audio wave that you can hear. So this is basically how a crystal radio works, and you'd have to have a speaker on this end, and in my case, I'm going to use a piezoelectric speaker, then I may also attach the circuit to an amplifier so you can hear it better on the microphone. Now the first thing you're going to need for a crystal radio is an antenna, and I have my antenna going out the wall with my ham radio port, and it's about a 20 foot antenna, and it comes out right here. All right. So I'd like to build a crystal radio, and one thing you need with a crystal radio is to build an antenna. So I'm going to build an antenna for my crystal radio, and I'm going to build it on top of this trampoline. Alright, it's super windy out here, so I hope this isn't interrupting the mic too much. I'm going to put this string on top of here, this will act as my insulator, and then I'll tie some string, some wire onto the end of this. My room is conveniently located over here 
where I can connect it up. In case you can't see, what I'm doing now is putting this long wire into this little hole in my wall. And this little hole goes into my room and it goes to my desk. So I'm going to break off enough so that way I can pull it tight. That looks good to me. For my inductor, I'm going to be using this variable high wattage resistor. Now, because our inductor is an inductor and a resistor, and we can look at that as a resistor in parallel with an inductor, we could have some issues with loss. But this resistor is on the order of maybe 400 ohms, and the currents we're dealing with are very low. So if we look at Ohm's law, that's E equals IR, and because our resistor is fairly low, probably 400 ohms, and our current is extremely small on the order of nanoamps, it's going to make our voltage drop across the circuit, it's going to be next to nothing. And so this resistor is not going to cause any problems. My variable capacitor is this capacitor right here. And I got this from the electronics warehouse along with the resistor. And it's very nice. It's geared down so you can have extremely fine precision of tuning. And it looks pretty good. The diode I also got from the electronics warehouse is has to be a germanium diode because that has a very low voltage drop across it. And this is going to be used as our detector circuit. I'm going to be using this little piezoelectric disc as my thing to listen to the output of the device. Now for the ground of your circuit, you need a very good ground connected to earth ground. Now a good ground from that is of course, the ground that goes to the earth ground of your house. Now, I'm going to be using this positive lead of my power supply because for some reason this also connects to earth ground. I'm not sure why ground of my power supply doesn't, but it causes some issues, but either way, use positive as earth ground. Right now I've got my function generator set to 4 kilohertz, 1.3 volts, a square wave at a 38% duty cycle. As you can see on the oscilloscope, it looks something like this. You can see those little blips, and those little blips right there are the little pulses this function generator is outputting. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to connect my function, genera function generator with my oscilloscope, and I'm going to connect that in series with, in parallel with my entire tank circuit. As you can see, once I have it connected up and I can adjust the frequency of my function generator, you see on here that you have the initial pulse and then you have this slight oscillation that follows it. And this oscillation is based on the frequency of the circuit. And so if I adjust the potential, if I adjust the variable resist uh, capacitor, you can see how that changes the frequency. So let's see what this frequency is right now. I'll press store and we will measure the frequency peak to peak and we see that this frequency is whoa 3.7 megahertz no wonder it's not working that's way too high of a frequency we need to lower this frequency down significantly I just added a smaller coil and as you can see the frequency is significantly increased even at maximum capacitance, it's only 400, 400 megahertz. If I increase it to the maximum frequency, then it seems that this would be at 6 megahertz. So we need to get a pretty big uh, coil on there in order to lower the frequency enough. Alright, so it seems like these two wire wound high wattage resistors aren't exactly working for the crystal radio. And neither did the Tesla coil. In fact, I can't get the crystal radio working. I'm not sure what the issue is. I've got a good diode on here, the 1N34, which is a germanium diode, the one typically used for crystal radios. I've got a giant antenna on here. And when I hook it up to the earpiece, I can hear uh, a static hum, or just it's kind of like the hum you hear from a radio, but uh, nothing comes on there. I can't get any radio stations near us, which is interesting. Uh, and when I tested it with the 
uh, oscilloscope, I, it was getting a super high frequency uh, response. All right, so I didn't exactly get this crystal radio working in this video. I'm not sure why, but I will keep trying and eventually I'll get a working crystal radio. It's funny. I built a working vacuum tube radio and I have fixed a few different other radios and I've got a working ham radio, but can't seem to build my own crystal radio, which is the simplest radio to build. But I'll eventually get it. Stay tuned for next time. Bye.